and don said i would like the to thank the organizers for this opportunity uh, we are going to talk on a very interesting uh, topic fatty liver a contributor or ally to diabetes mellitus especially type 2 diabetes mellitus and we have been listening since morning even dr bansi sabu made few uh, comments regarding importance of liver and diabetes so i have no disclosure for this uh, presentation so non alcoholic fatty liver disease nafl as it's been commonly said is one of the most important causes of liver disease worldwide and will probably emerge as the leading cause of end stage liver disease in coming decades and this was the uh, publications uh, 15 days back in a newspaper uh, we know that bihar is a dry state there is no alcohol been sold in bihar and in spite of that it reads bina sarab pa bhi kharab ho raha hai bihariyon ka liver and you can imagine what is the uh, uh, impact of this particular problems in a state without alcohol so uh, nfld basically is a silent condition uncertain escalations has been seen in clinically underestimated prevalence extra burden for development of metabolic conditions asymptomatic until in the advanced stages patient will come with simple anemia and when you evaluate anemia you will find that already patient has got varices this is how you actually pick up uh, fatty liver in the later stages of uh, disease barriers to diagnosis in direct barriers to diagnosis meaning we even today don't have any guidelines that all diabetics should be screened for nafl like we have for microalbuminuria annual screening we have for retinopathy screening we have for foot screening but we don't have any guidelines or recommendations even today for nafl screening indirect markers do not provide a reliable prognosis So with this, if you see the definition of NAFL, uh, uh, it's basically defined as an excessive hepatic fat accumulation within with, because of insulin resistance, and it's basically accumulation of triacylglycerol, steatosis in more than five percent of hepatocytes, exclusion of secondary causes and AFLDs, alcohol fatty liver disease. NAFL is pure steatosis, steatosis and mild lobular inflammation. NASH is basically uh, inflammation. and it could be in the three stages early stages is mild fibrosis second is uh, fibrotic and last is cirrhosis of liver which can even progress to hepatocellular carcinoma this again a real big problem with uh, uh, nafl and definitive diagnosis of nash requires a liver biopsy now nafl what is it the definition of nafl requires that there is evidence of hepatic steatosis either by imaging or by histology there's no causes for secondary hepatic accumulation such as significant alcohol consumption use of steatogenic medications or hereditary disorders the commonly used drug is amlodipine and nifedipine they are actually causing uh, fatty liver nafl comprises a spectrum of disease ranging from hepatic steatosis to nash fibrosis and liver cirrhosis these are the other important tests which needs to be done we need to rule out hepatic uh, hepatitis b and hepatitis c we need to rule out autoimmune hepatitis we need to rule out uh, iron uh, especially hemochromatosis serum cellular plasmin for wilson's disease alpha 1 antitrypsin and even hypothyroidism is one of the cause for nafl the spectrum of nafl is from healthy liver to fatty liver to nash to cirrhosis to even hepatocellular carcinoma this is how it progresses 70% people will present with nafl only 10 to 20% with nash and uh, 1.3 to 3.5% to cirrhosis per year this is a clinical presentation most patients are asymptomatic as i said they will just present with anemia and when you evaluate for anemia you will have stool for local blood positive you ask for an endoscopy you will find that they have varices factors associated with insulin resistance high body mass index high triglyceride levels you have, see all the possible markers of metabolic syndrome and patients who don't have insulin resistance can also have nafl and there are few genes which are pnpla3 uh, 148m and tm6sf2e167k variants which have higher liver fat content and increased risk of nash so there are genetic markers as well which needs to be evaluated when you don't see any features of insulin resistance don't feel why this gentleman has got nash you should actually look for the genetic markers this is a risk stratification which has been uh, in the guidelines of ace 2022 this is very very interesting and very very important as well you see the high risk groups for nafl is pre diabetes or type 2 diabetes 
सो वेन अ पेशेंट विथ प्री डायबिटीज कम्स टू आर क्लिनिक वी टेक इट वेरी वेरी लाइटली बहुत थोड़ा सा शुगर बढ़ा ना डोंट टेक इट सीरियसली थोड़ा वजन कम करेंगे थोड़ा एक्सरसाइज करेंगे यू विल बी ऑल राइट डोंट मेक इट फील वेरी वेरी लाइट टू द पेशेंट्स यू शुड इंटेंसिवली ट्रीट अ प्री डायबिटीज दे आर थ्री फोर इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ इट बिकॉज प्री डायबिटीज इज ऑल्सो एन हैज इक्वल रिस्क ऑफ माइक्रोवेस्कुलर कॉम्प्लिकेशन और सी ए डी इवन प्री डायबिटिक्स कैन गॉट गेट माइक्रोवेस्कुलर कॉम्प्लिकेशन एंड इवन प्री डायबिटिक्स कैन गेट नैफिल्ड एंड नैश एंड सीरासिस ऑफ लिवर एंड इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज इफ यू इंटरवेन इंटेंसिवली द चांसेस ऑफ रिवर्टिंग प्री डायबिटीज टू ए नॉन डायबिटिक फॉर लॉन्ग टाइम इज ऑल्सो देर सो दिस इज वट वॉट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू ट्रीट प्री डायबिटीज इंटेंसिवली ओबेसिटी एंड मोर देन टू कार्डियो मेटाबोलिक रिस्क फैक्टर्स शुड बी वेरी वेरी हाई रिस्क ग्रुप फॉर नैफल स्टीएटोसिस और इंक्रीज इन लिवर एंजाइम्स आर अगेन इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर्स एंड यू नीड टू स्टेटिफाई द रिस्क अकॉर्डिंग टू द फाइब्रोसिस फाइब्रोसिस इज फिफ फोर स्कोर वी नीड टू कैलकुलेट यू नीड टू हैव एंजाइम्स ए एस टी एल टी लेवल्स एज ऑफ द पेशेंट एंड यू नीड टू हैव द प्लेटलेट्स एंड दैट इज दीज आर द फोर इंपॉर्टेंट पैरामीटर्स you need to put in an app and you also saw the uh, uh, calculator how you calculated and accordingly you can uh, put them on if it is less than 1.3 it's low risk it's between uh, more than 2.7 uh, 67 is high risk and between 1.3 uh, to 2.67 is indeterminate risk so this is how you can uh, uh, stratify risk of the patients according to the fif4 score this is again very important that childhood obesity adiposity and risk of diabetes subtypes is very very important today there is a remarkable increase in childhood obesity if you stand in a bus stop you will find that 50% of the children are obese and this is a real big problem especially in the urban community and you need to include all these factors whether it could be a lada it could be sidd sird mot or mard so these are or it could be a genetically predicted childhood uh, adiposity which are at a very high risk of uh, nafel and we have got very interesting published data to suggest that nafel in childhood can actually be a risk factors for type 2 diabetes and almost 30% of this obese uh, type 2 children uh, obese children with nafel are uh, having type 2 diabetes very very interesting data so we need to if a pediatrician sees a obese child with fever and cough they should not only treat fever and cough but also train them for weight reduction and take care of their obesity as well nafl is a global prevalence and uh, if you see the our country wise almost 20 to 35% is the prevalence of nafl in our country which is again very very underrated and on the other side if you see the diabetes prevalence is just 11.3 and the diagnosis is 8.7 so the prevalence of nafl is very very high if you see our own data the global prevalence 25% prevalence in india is almost 40% and prevalence in high risk patient with metabolic condition is 58.2 and prevalence in children so imagine 35.4% is very very underestimated and nafl may be present in 70% of type 2 diabetes prevalence of biopsy proven nash in asymptomatic type 2 diabetics with normal lft is 20% so you can imagine a patient is silently progressing from nash to cirrhosis of liver and advanced fibrosis in asymptomatic individuals with type 2 diabetes is 5 to 7% and obesity and intra abdominal fat are well known factors for nafl and nash this is a very interesting data that to the from different countries to suggest that the risk of developing diabetes in individuals with nafl is very very high almost 5 times to 10 times is a data from japan korea australia france korea the multiple data the important thing is almost each uh, data has taken other uh, risk factors uh, for predicting the uh, prevalence of uh, pre predicting the association of diabetes with nafl some have taken ultrasound some have taken as uh, simple enzymes someone has taken fibrosis liver index so there are different uh, parameters they have included but the prevalence they have, uh, uh, the association is almost 5 to 10 10, 10 times of nafl so this is a very very interesting data we have data as even from the children incidence of type 2 diabetes in children with nafl this was published last year and it's a very very uh, uh, cause of concern in the community with the rising Uh, prevalence of obesity rising incidence of obesity in our community it's very important that we need to take care of nafl as well 
And if you see children with NAFLD are at a higher risk of existing and incident type 2 diabetes, in addition to known risk factors for type 2 diabetes, severity of liver histology at the time of NAFLD diagnosis was independently associated. So you can imagine if the FIF4 score is on the higher side, the chances of getting uh, diabetes and the complications of uh, NASH is very, very high in children as well. So you can imagine that incidence of type 2 diabetes in children is 30 times greater than previously reported pediatric population. You can imagine it's very, very high. We need to look after it. Even pre-diabetes is very, very high today in obese uh, children. Similarly, we have a very interesting data which was published last year. Serum sex hormone binding globulin is a mediator of the association between intrahepatic lipid content and type 2 diabetes. And this is the Maastricht study which was published in 2022. So you can imagine even just because sex hormone binding globulin is a hepatokine and hepatokine is one of the factors which is responsible for intrahepatic lipids. And this is one of the cause for association with type 2 diabetes. So this is very, again, important just by, and it's more important in female with obesity than males. This is also very, very significant. Now, if you see pathophysiology of NASH, insulin resistance is the key factor, which leads to increase in non-esterified free fatty acid. And this free fatty acid actually makes the 60, 59 to 60% of the triacyl glycerol, which is there in the hepatocytes. The rest comes from the de novo synthesis uh, of, uh, in the liver, uh, and the other comes from the diet. So all these three together constitute 100% of triacyl glycerol, which are seen in the hepatocytes. And this basically leads to lipogenesis, triacyl, saturated fatty acids. Then how can you predict that this gentleman with a NAFL can progress to NASH? How the inflammation starts? How, uh, whom can you say that this person can actually have an inflammatory reactions and progress to NASH with NAFLD? Because NAFLD is seen in 70%, NASH is seen in only 20%. So you need to actually look after a few markers, like there are few markers which have been actually published recently in Nature Metabolism is BMP4 and Gremlin 1 that regulate the hepatic cell senescence during clinical progression of NAFLD to NASH. So there are few research which is going on. There are few biomarkers which is on in the research which can actually predict that this gentleman with NAFL can actually progress to NASH and you have to be very, very careful in those cl class of patients. Transcriptomics is another important study where you actually look into the RNA codings where uh, they can actually identify something like thrombospondin 2 as a biomarker for NASH and advanced liver uh, fibrosis. So these are few important publications which has come up in recent times because of increasing prevalence and incidence of NASH. Cell metabolism, in, uh, uh, was, there is another article published in Cell Metabolism that liver fibrosis activated transcriptional networks govern hepatocyte reprogramming and intrahepatic communications. This is what is called as crosstalk. Like we see patient lands up with sepsis, simple sepsis, isn't it? And he has multi-organ failures. So how sepsis causes multi-organ failures, kidney failure, heart failure, neural failure, hepatic failure, because of the cytokines which actually are generated after a sepsis, that causes a crosstalk between all these different organs. Similarly, we have a crosstalk in liver and pancreas and other organs as well. We know that there is a common link of uh, NAFL, insulin resistance, abdominal obesity. And as uh, even Dr. Bansi Zabu said, 60% of us sitting here have some form of uh, abdominal obesity, metabolic syndrome, and type 2 diabetes. There's a very interesting data published from Korea that NAFL and the risk of type 2 diabetes, almost 11,000 Koreans were re-evaluated. Uh, re and they did a baseline insulin levels and a, a follow-up insulin levels. And they could find uh, baseline fatty liver in 27% of the people. And they found that almost 88% males and 63% overweight or obese had uh, uh, prevalence of diabetes, progression to diabetes. Risk of type 2 diabetes at five year follow up, the overall incidence was 1.6% and without fatty liver was 0.4%, but with fatty liver, it was almost 4%. You can imagine almost 10 times more in people who had fatty liver. So you can imagine again, uh, NAFL is, uh, sorry, Fatty liver predicts future development of type 2 diabetes independent of insulin resistance and baseline fasting glucose. So you can imagine just you see an NAFL, you need to intervene it. Don't just try analyzing whether he has insulin resistance or he doesn't have insulin resistance. 
Nafeld and risk of type 2 diabetes. Again, is, there is a sustained Nafeld is associated with an increased risk of uh, development of type 2 diabetes and deterioration of metabolic parameters, similarly with insulin resistance. So you can see that the risk is very, very important to analyze. This is another novel concept of pancreas fat and insulin signaling. This is a cross talk between fatty liver, pancreatic fat cells, and inflammation in IGT patients. Why I'm saying, presenting this uh, hypothesis is that NAFLD is a, a, not only associated with type 2 diabetes, it's a cause of type 2 diabetes. That is what we need to understand. We need to intervent uh, NAFLD to actually prevent type 2 diabetes. So this is a Tübinger family study from Germany, which is a very landmark study. The study was done uh, where they actually asked the uh, observational study, they asked questions like what pushes people from an insulin sensitive status to one of insulin resistance. When we are born, we have insulin sensitivity, but we gradually develop insulin resistance. What underlies the ability of an individual to respond with compensatory insulin hypersecretion? Obesity and role of uh, uh, Hepatokines, which I talked earlier, subphenotypes of obesity. It could be subcutaneous fat, visceral fat, liver fat. I'm talking about even the ectopic fats which are there. Ectopic fats means the fat which should not be there in that particular organ. Like liver shouldn't have fat. Kid pancreas shouldn't have fat. Our heart shouldn't have fat. If you have fat in the uh, myocardium, fat in the kidneys, fat in the pancreas, fat in the liver, they are all ectopic fats. So they are all unhealthy uh, fats. So metabolic there could be metabolic healthy obese people who tend to have high levels of subcutaneous fat but little visceral fat. So all fatty people don't land up with CAD, all fatty people don't land up with complications. 40 to 45 percent of obese people are pretty healthy as well. Now benign fatty liver could be genetic predisposition towards liver fat in obesity but they don't cause damage to other organs. They are benign. So some obese individuals have a metabolically healthy benign fatty liver with limited lipotoxicity. You can have even malign, malignant fatty liver as well. And they have genetic predisposition to malignant fatty liver because they start releasing something called as fatoin A, which is a hepatokine, and that acts on via TLR4 immune cells, causes microinflammation, localized insulin resistance, peripheral insulin resistance, and this is one uh, factor which actually progresses to NASH, and NASH progresses to cirrhosis of liver. So this is what is very, very important, that fatoin A is an endogenous agonist to toll-like receptor TLR4 and regulates insulin resistance and inflammation. It acts as an endogenous ligand to TLR4 to promote in, uh, lipid-induced insulin resistance. And fatoin A is a major carrier protein of free fatty acids in the circulation. So this is what I was talking about. You need to actually evaluate all your nephrology patients as early as possible to prevent the new onset of diabetes. Just one or a couple of slides. Perivascular adipose tissues is what is very, very important. What do you mean by perivascular adipose tissue? You have arterioles in the liver, uh, hepatic arterioles, and the uh, adipose tissues surrounding those arterioles are very, very important because they are the important targets for hepatokines and leading to inflammation and progressive progression to uh, NASH and, uh, the, uh, and further signaling the fatty acid signaling cycles from insulin to glucagon to somatostatin at the level of pancreas, alters the expression of chemoattractants and cytokines. And this actually one of the mechanism of crosstalk between the fatty liver and the pancreatic fat cells and inflammations. So you have an NAFL, you have an inflammation, it goes to the pancreas and it causes a, a pancreatic uh, beta cell dysfunction. And that is how it has been asso uh, associated that the cytokines are actually causing beta cell dysfunction and one of the mechanism for causing diabetes. So this is what is very, very interesting crosstalk between liver and pancreas. There are also association uh, that crosstalk between fatty liver and pancreatic fat cells is also a crosstalk with impaired insulin action in the brain as well. And we've been seeing that at the even at the in utero, there is insulin sensitivity in the brain. Uh, there are a lot of data to support that. This lack of time, I've not been talking on all those parameters, but they are in utero insulin sensitivity in the brain. And in patients with NAFLD and ectopic fat, even that is impaired. So what is important is fat cells respond with an inflammatory response activating macrophage, plus fat cells from perivascular tissue, perihalar fat from kidney, fat cells in the pancreas. All these things basically hypothesize to increase prevalence of pre-diabetes and later diabetes. So 
So this is very important. There is a consequence for prevention of type 2 diabetes. Liver seems to be the kingpin in the metabolic blunder and brain the mastermind. The type 2 diabetes prevention needs to start early in life with a focus on gestational period. Studies are required to investigate and develop pharmacological intervention to treat fatty liver, fatty pancreas, exercise, non-response and brain insulin resistance. So this is very, very important. So to summarize this presentation, abdominal obesity and insulin registration link NAFL with metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes. NAFL plays a key role in genesis of hepatic insulin resistance. It is a precursor of metabolic syndrome rather than its hepatic manifestation. And NAFL increases the risk of insulin type 2 diabetes. Intervention in reversing NAFL may be a rational approach in prevention and treatment of metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes. So I thank you all for your patient listening and I thank the organizers for this opportunity. Thank you very much.